Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going into the basics of working with takes. Takes are a very powerful way of organizing and working with our scenes that allow us to help simplify the process of rendering out multiple cameras or even having different versions of our project on the same file. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we are in uh, this example where I have this animation going on. And actually, this should be at 190. All right, so we can see the animation there. And I already have some cameras set up. Uh, I have one close up, all right, that we'll use from 0 to 70. Second close up that we'll use from 70 to 140. And then a third shot that I'll be using from 140 to 190. Okay, and while there are multiple ways I could render out these camera angles, uh, my favorite way of doing this is with takes. So I think takes give us the most flexibility when it comes to compositing these camera angles together in After Effects. I can decide when the transitions are going to happen, what transition I want that to be, uh, and takes um, really uh, fit the bill for this very well. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. All right, so one of the problems with rendering out multiple cameras without takes is that we have to, you know, make sure we're looking through the camera in our render settings, make sure we set the frame range, make sure we have a different file name for each camera, and uh, that can be a lot of work, and there's a lot of places where things can go wrong, okay? Uh, but we can use takes to simplify for this, and simplify this for us. And so there's a couple of things we need to do in order to kind of get ready for this. Now these aren't exactly ready to go, my render settings. I don't have a file name specified or, or a um, multi-pass image spec specified either, uh, but we'll just pretend that's the case. And what I can do here is actually create multiple render settings, okay? And really the one thing I'm gonna change about these is going to be uh, the frame range. So the first one will be zero to 70 for close up one. And I will name this close up one. All right, can copy and paste this. That way I can just call this close up two. Okay, this is gonna be 70 to 140. All right, and then I'll duplicate this again or copy it again. And this will be wide shot. Okay, which will be 140 to 190. All right, so if nothing else here, I've set up the different frame ranges. Okay, if I really want to get crazy and take this a step further, um, I can use a token for the different file names here. And I really should have done this before I created these. But what I can do is by clicking on this arrow, I can use different tokens, which are just kind of presets uh, for the name. So for instance, you can have the file name be based on whatever camera you're looking through, um, whatever pass name it is, uh, whatever take, right? You can add the frame range automatically to the file name, whole, so, a whole bunch of different things. Um, but what we're going to do is set this to take. And so the token for that is dollar sign take. And what I'll do is just copy this because for my multi-passes, I could do something like that and that's what i would want for all three of these okay so as i said i should have done this before um, i made these okay but i wanted to keep things as simple as possible uh, so now i don't have to worry about the file names anymore the file names for both my beauty pass and my multi-pass image or images um, is going to be based on the take name Okay, so that's one less thing I have to worry about now is, you know, duplicate file names and, and figuring out what I'm going to do there. Okay, so to, to find our takes, they're usually on the right hand side here. And, you know, if you've messed around with your user interface, they might be somewhere else. But uh, by default, they're a tab on the right hand side. And you'll notice we have a default take um, to begin with called main. 
And I really recommend just kind of leaving this one alone and, and not doing anything um, in this particular take. So any other takes I create, um, I will do by right clicking and choosing child take. And so I could call this close up one. Okay. <clears throat> right click on main take again, choose new child take, call this close up two. Right click on main again, call this wide shot. Okay. And this is oops, just kind of the most basic way of, of using takes. So after this, I'll, I'll kind of show you some other things we could do with takes as well. Okay. So right now I have not done anything different to these takes. Okay. So they are the exact same and all you know, everything that's inside my main take here, which is, you know, my project, whatever camera I'm using, whatever render settings I'm using, as of this moment, that is what is going to be in these other takes. It's not until we go in and start making changes in these um, that they will start to be different. And thankfully, the two changes we want to make are already right here for us. So these two icons here allow us to change what camera we want to take uh, to use and what render setting we want a take to use. So if I click on the camera, the camera, you can see it's currently set to inherit from parent, which is our main take. But I don't want that. I want it to use close up one. Click on the camera icon next to the close up two take, choose close up two. Click on the camera icon next to wide shot, choose the wide shot camera. Now, if I click through my different takes, we will see that they are using the different cameras all right so that's all we have to do to set up that we also need to tell these takes to use the different render settings we set up uh, because we're gonna have different frame ranges for each camera so if we just click on our render settings icon we can choose the previous render settings we set up for those as well okay so that is how we can set up and work with our different render settings. And if we just kind of come into our render settings, you can see as I change takes that it's also going to change what render settings we want it to use. All right. And if all we're doing is trying to render out multiple cameras, that's about it. Um, if you wanted to just render one take, all you have to do is switch to that take and you can use your normal render to picture viewer. Okay. If you wanted to render out all three of your takes or even, you know, a selection of these, you can click on the icons here to check them. And now if you go to your render menu, you will have an option to render all takes. OK, and the problem with this is we really don't want it to render the main take. We just want the close up one, close up two and wide shot. So all takes isn't really going to work for us, but mark takes will. So that's what we could do, and it's going to, you know, queue up all three of these and render them one at a time. It'll render all the frames from close up one, then it'll go to close up two, and then the wide shot. Okay, so super easy way to render out multiple cameras kind of all in one go without having to do a lot of setup. The great thing about setting up takes this way and using them is I can go back to my main take and I could make any other change I wanted to to my file. So if I need to, you know, work on some materials, update some lighting, I'm not going to have to do any work um, in these takes uh, to, to fix that or, or make sure they work correctly. Okay. One little caveat with, with takes. Um, I primarily use Team Render uh, in a render farm setting for my projects. And um, as far as I know, the takes do not work with um, Team Render Server. You'll notice that you can do regular team render, which is something different. Um, but as far as I know, like I said, takes do not work with um, team render server. OK, so let's do something a little bit more advanced here. OK, I'm in my main take. I can switch cameras in this to say my wide shot. All right. And let's say I wanted to do a version of this that maybe had um, some different materials. So what I could do is come back to my takes and I'm going to create one more child take. 
and I am gonna call this, let's say, um, purple button, okay? And I'm not gonna worry about, you know, the camera and, um, you know, render settings at this point, but now what I can do is come in and change the material of this button, but that'll be the only thing that's different. Everything else will look the same, will render the same, um, it'll just be a different version of this file um, that I can render out still inside one Cinema 4D project, okay? So there are really kind of two ways to approach this. We do have an auto take option, which is very similar to auto key and that it'll allow me to go in and make changes um, and you know work with things that way. Um, I've had some mixed results with this, especially when it comes to uh, switching out materials. If all we're gonna do is hide and unhide objects, auto takes works pretty well. Um, but if we're gonna be doing materials, I don't recommend using auto take, okay? So let's see what we can do, all right? Now, before I actually do anything in my purple button take, any kind of these changes, I do wanna at least start in my main take. And what that means is I'm gonna create this new material in my main take. I'm gonna make any changes to it in my main take but I will assign it in the child take, okay? That was weird. Looks like I have, perfect. So let's just do something simple. Let's change the diffuse color here, okay? To something like, you know, purple. Like I said, we also need to put this color in our emission. And so now we have a purple button, okay? Let's call this button purple. All right. Now that I've created this material in my main take, I can go ahead and assign it in my purple button take. All right. So what I need to do is once I am in my purple button take is find the piece of geometry that has that material, which is in this case, the sphere. And you'll notice that all of my properties here are grayed out, okay? And that's because when we are in this new take and we haven't told Cinema 4D, we want to override them, okay? So what I could do is on any property I want to modify in this take is right click, okay, and choose override. But I don't wanna do that for my position properties. I wanna do it in my material tag. So what I'm gonna do is in my material tag, find the actual material property where it's telling me what material is on this geometry and I'm gonna right click on it, choose override. Now I can change this to whatever I want. And in this case, it's gonna be our purple button. So I'll drop that material in there and now we can see the button's purple, okay? If I go back up to my main take, it's yellow. In this one, it's purple, okay? So I just changed this material and you know, at any point I can decide which version of this project I want to render, okay? Let's take it a step further and you know, hide some objects just so we can see how that works and how auto take works. Um, because I do like to use auto take when hiding and, and unhiding objects. So let's say uh, in this purple button take, um, I don't want um, you know, the behind shape, the text, and that arrow. I don't want the button um, text, its shape, and the arrows here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is turn on auto take, come here to my objects, and notice now how all of these properties are blue, okay? They're no longer grayed out. And so Cinema 4D is gonna track what we're changing and what we're doing in this take, and it's going to update it um, in this purple button take. So as I said, we wanna get rid of the behind. So I'll change those stoplights to red. I'll get rid of, uh, is it, here it is, type in button, set that to red, and I'm done. Just like with auto key, we wanna make sure we turn off auto take. And now you can see in wide shot, we can see those elements in purple button, they're gone, okay? So we really can set up you know, very different versions of our project. We can switch out materials. 
You could even do completely different animations um, using takes this way, okay? So it's really, really nice because it allows us to you know, conveniently do all of this stuff inside of one project without having to save multiple versions of our project and, and making sure everything stays consistent and up to date, okay? So that's what I got. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next one.